Professor Dr. Lokhinan Donbora is a celebrated literature of India. He is indeed a household name in Assam, not only for his contributions to Assamese literature with a huge number of short stories and novels, but also as an important scientist with significant contributions to climatology and agricultural meteorology. Dr. Bora has authored 31 novels, 27 anthologies of short stories, three travelogues, six books on popular science, two plays, one voluminous autobiography, two biographical sketches, two translated works, two journalistic works in Assamese, and also one textbook in English on environment. Dr. Lokhi Nondonbora received the Padma Shri Award in the year 2015. He is also the proud recipient of the Saraswati Samman of the KK Birla Foundation, a very prestigious honor in India, in 2008 for his novel Kaya Kolpo. In 2013, Dr. Bora received the Rachna Samagra Award of the Bharatiya Bhasha Parishad. Then came the most prestigious award in literature in India, the Sahitya Academy Award for his novel Patal Bhairobi in the year 1988. In 2004, the Assam Valley Award was given to Dr. Bora for his immense contribution in the field of literature as well as his contributions to other fields of work. Dr. Lokhinandan Bora received the Madhubdev Award in 2010, given by the Government of Assam. Dr. Bora is also the recipient of the Assam Publication Board's Lifetime Achievement Award in the year 2012. The flying birds symbolize positivity, the hopes, dreams and aspirations in the deepest recesses of one's mind find flight with the soaring wings of the birds. The same reflection is found in the dynamism of Dr. Lokhinandan Bora's soaring personality. I feel really distressed when I recall some of the significant incidents in my life spanning several decades. Some period of my life is very slow, monotonous and uninteresting. But some are so interesting that it always haunts my mind and they are really not ready. But talking about himself is an expression of his ego. This does not fall under Vaishnavite humility. Not only in Vaishnavism, the entire tradition of Hinduism does not allow egoism or self-praise. Overcoming vanity is the ultimate result of the practice of Hinduism. This is why saints have not written about themselves in their writings. When we read the writings of Srimanta Shankardev and Sri Sri Madhavdev, we find that nothing can be known from their personal life. So is the case with the Kalidasa also. This is why the death of Kalidasa is shrouded in mystery. Can my self narration form the history of the period of the changing time? I firmly believe it may form. There are so many bitter and varied experiences in my life which may not happen to many others. Changes so many in the society in my lifetime are really surprising. World is mysterious. The life in this world is mysterious. Even the motion of time itself is mysterious. Such mysteries touch everyone's life. So a person has to tell so many things about himself. So a person has to hear so many tales about others. This is why 
a person is a storehouse of tales and stories. So, I want to tell my stories and talk about myself. I had two brothers, and they were much older than me. Perhaps the gap is more than 20 years. They wanted to study. They had their early education in an MP school, in my high school, in my village. But my father was simply a poor farmer. It was beyond his means to maintain their sons in the town for their study in an English school. My eldest brother, Komal Sundapara, was very good at the studies. But he could not pursue higher study because of financial constraints. So he became an LP school teacher. My another brother, Balurambara, purchased 50 bigas of land, money provided by my teacher brother. So, for each for my father was over. And we have two sisters. They were good looking. My father thought that they could be married off very easily. Hence, he decided that my eldest brother Kamal Sundar Bada should marry now. Dr. Bora was born in a village named Kujida in the huge Hatisu Moza in Nogao district. 12 kilometers away from Nogao town, the connecting road of this village touches Jagi Road through National Highway 37 towards the east or in Somua village beyond Bezor Souk. In my childhood, apart from my mother, I was taken good care of by my elder sister-in-law. But after giving birth to two children, she herself became very busy and hard-pressed with time. Actually, in those days, no child who grew up in a huge joint family got good care. My elder sister-in-law also after giving birth to two children, died at a very early age. After my sister-in-law's demise, the family faced very hard times. As bringing up three children, including me all alone, would not have been possible for my mother. All the members of the family discussed the matter and got my elder brother remarried. The bride was from Purani Gudam, named Kodomi. Her real name was Kadomburi. I regarded this woman as my mother. In the initial stages of my life, her contribution was immense. A very active woman, she profusely used proverbs and sayings while talking. By the time I reached college, listening to her fluent Assamese made me realize that the Assamese language could easily carry feelings and expressions of practical rural life without taking help from the Sanskrit language. I still feel that a good dictionary can be prepared by going amidst people and mingling with them and listening to their talk and their conversations. So far his language is concerned, uh, it is quite typical. And uh, Assamese society is properly depicted in his uh, Mephelsian search stories. And uh, uh, Dr. Bala was a student of science, no doubt, but at the same time, he is an artist, and every word of his fictions just reflecting the human character and human thought 
ह्यूमन साइकोलॉजी दिस इज द फर्स्ट इंस्टीट्यूशन वेयर आई हैड माय अर्लियर एजुकेशन एंड दिस स्कूल वाज एट द टाइम कॉल्ड कुजिदा एलपी स्कूल वेयर माय ब्रदर कमल चंद्र बरा brought me here for admission into the course in it admission class 1 of this institution but as i was taught at home the headmaster told me that i was not fee- i was qualified only for the higher classes after finishing my studies in the local lp school i was sent to bebeja middle english school where i showed good results in the annual examination in my childhood during my adolescent period horror was more intimate with me than my classmates but he was a domestic help at our home horror has great contribution in my literary career it is because of him that i could know about the lifestyle and ambience of the tribal people and other communities in my neighborhood they are taking place in my writings in the first period of my literary career dr bora's art of characterization is simply adorable he picks up characters from all the strata of the society particularly he picks up characters from the lower rung of the society dr bora he has an eye for the happenings of society around him he never ignore the socio political conditions and he is aware of the fact the the character the are very often shaped by the socio political condition around them and as a result we can find the characters they are not only individuals but these characters they become a mirror of the society also from this angle also dr bora's creations are noteworthy after this scholarship examination in which i appeared i felt free but i could not decide what to do so i used to roam about aimlessly with holder but at the same time i used to really enjoy angling with holder in the river sunai some 3 kilometers away from our home today the sunai river neither has the current nor the depth of the past water hyacinth has covered many parts of the river the sight of the sunai today brings to my mind wordsworth's poem after he was overwhelmed by the sight of the yarrow and then the poem yarrow visited when he was disillusioned at the change that had taken over the river with the passage of time during the period spanning from his youth till his old age i do shed tears at the change that has taken over my dear sunai river it was on the joys and sorrows hopes and frustrations and love and separation of the people living on the banks of this sonai river that my novel ganga silonir pakhi was based my first brother was a very talented actor it was said that in those days it was the people of our village who could perform best in bhavna and my elder brother used to be the lead actor of the troupe Though he was very strict with me in matters of discipline and studies he allowed me to accompany the bhavna troop to other villages my interest in bhavna became so great that i learned by heart many sanskrit shlokas recited by the lead actors which came handy during my high school education when i had sanskrit as a subject not only that two of my well read and highly praised stories Guru Parva and Devotar Byadhi were born out of the influence that the poverty 
of those Bhavna performers had on me. Nineteen forty-eight. My school life was about to come to an end because I would have to appear in the matriculation examination conducted for the first time by the Guwahati University with the curriculum of Calcutta University. Examination began. My two brothers every day came from the village to inquire about my examination. Two months passed and the day of announcement of my result came and I was really worried for my result. I scored star marks in matriculation. Everybody was very happy at home. I reached Guwahati with my eldest brother. On the advice of my relative, Lolit Sandra Hajarika, I took an application to the then principal of Cotton College, Dr. Banikanto Kakuti, mentioning that I had scored star marks. He read my application and immediately recommended my admission into the first year science class. This is second mess, block one and two. Now it is called Shohit Ranjit Parkshwari Hostel. The vibrant hostel life and my bright friends and the prospect of a new life ahead of me overcame my sorrow at leaving my home and members of the family. Those years in this hostel are ever green and fresh in my mind. I am filled with nostalgia when I think about those days. In my intermediate, my subjects were physics, mathematics, chemistry, and botany as four subjects. In my B.Sc. I had honors in physics. I had the fortune of having students as a very good teacher. In physics, my ideal teachers were Dr. Hinojan Puyampura, Prem Tushyam, and Dr. Bhumidhar Sodri. I had an ambition that I should be a teacher like Bhumidhar Sodri. In my time, Dr. Banikakko Kakoti was the principal of Cotton College. Almost a year passed. During the long summer holidays at home, I became restless. With the beginning of the long vacation from college, adversity came into my life. Upon reaching home, I found my father very sick. Most of the time, he remained confined to bed. One day, my father became senseless and he never regained consciousness. Sorrow of losing my father tormented me and my village life haunted me like anything. I became very lonely and sometimes I behaved like an introvert. I found that a bleak future awaits me and I suffered from inferiority complex and it became very difficult for me to adjust myself to the new situation. But just before six months for my ISC final exemption, I started studying seriously and being busy so much, my worry finished. And now I'm to relate the sad story about my ISC final examination. Generally, just before the examination, one of my brothers visit me and go about me, about, and go about the preparation for the examination, etc. But this time, nobody came. My last examination was over by noon. I reached the hotel. As soon as I reached the hotel, Bhavan Swaki and some of my friends told that I have, we have been asked that you should go home immediately. They packed 
all my belongings and took me to the railway station and gave me goodbye when I on board the railway. Rail. Harumani, so today is the day of Orika Aji hai kuch hai. Logo loge khoro le yahi lo. Tene tu khobar tu kuniyo diya nahi. Dhor jod dhor. Hongkar ene ko ai. Purha hole je manu more. Tene na hoi. Dekha dekhi rio more. Mar moril. After the shadha of my mother, the house became very silent. Loneliness and grief engulfed my mind. In due course of time, my ISC exam results were declared. Even though I passed in the first division scoring good marks, I was not among the 10 toppers. But as planned earlier, I decided to pursue BSc. Last two years in Cotton College passed gainfully and pleasantly. I came to know many bright persons. I was heavily influenced by them because all of them were perseverant and they had a mission in life. Soon began a new chapter of my academic life in Kolkata. Bhavendranath Hoikya and I got admitted into the prestigious Presidency College. And after meeting our Bengali classmates, it did not take us long to enjoy the beauty of college life in Kolkata. Very soon, we found accommodation in the Shornamoi Hostel. We soon became familiar with the Kolkata lifestyle. But what surprised me was that every Bengali student who pursued MA or MSc in any subject showed a keen interest in literature. They read sufficient material on literature and had great respect for the literatures. I too started reading Bengali short stories and novels from that time on. And in the meantime, I had learned to speak and write Bengali. I must mention the famous coffee house at Presidency College. This coffee house gave birth to many Bengali magazines and many prominent Bengali literatures. We too used to go to the coffee house. Future dreams used to be echoed in the midst of coffee and cigarette smoke. Had I not read the stories of prominent Bengali literatures like Shubod Ghosh and Narendranath Mitra, I would not have been able to think that I could become a story writer and I might not have had the desire to become one. Literature would not have been a part of my life and therefore I am always indebted to Kolkata. Our final examinations were scheduled for December 1954. And from June, we started studying seriously. After the exams, I felt quite relaxed. Now, I would be able to return home as soon as my family sent me money. Till the money came, I earned my pocket money, translating a Bengali history book into Assamese and some English advertisements assigned by the company. After about two months, the result of my MSc examination was announced. It was not as bad as I expected it to be. The marks that I secured was quite sufficient to get a job in any of the colleges of Assam. So it becomes evident that I'll have to leave my dear village in search of a job and I'll be out in the wide, wide world. <laughs>